The following is a conversation with Bronwyn Shaw, Professor of Medicine from Milwaukee and current president of the World Marrow Donor Association, which consists of several organizations promoting collaboration worldwide and enabling best practices in stem cell transplant and donation. We discuss her way into the association as well as into several stem cell transplant registries. Stem cell transplant field is the unique template for building data sharing platforms. This is not very known in the community, but needs to be highlighted everywhere. We discuss benefits of such platforms, as well as current challenges and chances in the future. We sincerely thank Professor Shaw for accepting the conversation and we really look forward to collaborate and to build on existing collaborations worldwide to improve research, education and all other fields of interest for trainees and young investigators in the stem cell transplant field and cellular therapy field. The whole discipline of stem cell transplant depends on donation and data sharing. And that's why organizations such as the World Marrow Donor Association are so important. That cannot be stressed enough. And now enjoy the conversation with Professor Bronwyn Shaw. What was your, first of all, just try, uh, try for, for the trainees out there, um, try to elaborate on your background, um, where you come from, what your um, education was, how you got involved with, with uh, transplantation, and um, then maybe how someone gets involved in, me in meetings, associations, societies. So mainly try to first start on your where you came from and um, how you got here where you are now. Okay, sure. I'd be happy to do that. Uh, thank you, Nico. So um, I think uh, I think I have a little bit of a interesting background because I actually grew up in South Africa and did my medical school training in South Africa. And then after that, I moved to London and did most of my um, postgraduate my hematology training, my transplant fellowship, my um, uh, PhD was all in um, in England, mostly in London and Nottingham. And that was also where I started working in, um, in registries, uh, both data registries and in donor registries. Um, and um, then in 2013, I actually came to the United States to spend some time at the CIBMTR data registry. And that was the beginning uh, of the time when I decided to move to America. And, uh, and so now I'm located here in Milwaukee in the United States in the uh, CIBMTR, the Center for International Blood and Marrow Transplant Research, which as you know, is the, the kind of partner of the EBMT. Um, and so the, um, the, I, I guess the way that all that uh, happened was a little bit by luck, a little bit by knowing people, a little bit by taking a lot of opportunities. Um, when I was training in London, I was uh, working in a, in a hospital doing my transplant um, rotation. And that uh, hospital is the Royal Free Hospital, which was very closely aligned with the Anthony Nolan and Anthony Nolan, is, as you know, but I'm sure some others as well, was the first unrelated donor registry in the world from 1974 and, uh, you know, is the UK's big unrelated donor registry. So when I was doing my clinical, um, my clinical training, I actually became very um, involved with Anthony Nolan because we had joint meetings. And I think it's it's really something that I appreciate is when the scientists and the clinicians have joint meetings or journal clubs or you know this type of thing because it really helps you to to get the full picture and learn the other side of the coin and because I met people um, through that 
actually I had the opportunity to then do my PhD and my PhD was at the Anthony Nolan. And so with my clinical training being focused on transplant and then my PhD being focused on HLA immunogenetics and translational research in an outcome registry, that really solidified my interest in big outcome registries in, you know, the use of genetic data to predict outcomes after transplant, and then many of the other issues related to donor selection and, uh, and other aspects um, related to the donor, like safety and suitability and, and all of those topics. And when I was at Anthony Nolan, um, the medical director was John Goldman. Um, I don't know how many people know John Goldman now because unfortunately he died several years ago, but, but John was one of the people who was very instrumental at the very beginning of transplantation. And he actually was the person who, um, who actually started the World Marrow Donor Association, the WMDA, um, as well as was influential in many other organizations setting up, including Anthony Nolan. And, and so I was very lucky because I worked with, with John and um, he recommended that I become involved in the WMDA. The WMDA at that time had a committee called the um, Medical Working Group. Um, and so because of his um, mentorship and his recommendation, I actually started working with the WMDA and that was, uh, well, I think in the mid 2000s, maybe 2006 or so. And so um, starting working at that point with the WMDA, I just got more and more involved and, you know, increased my interest in my activity. And so now I'm the president of the WMDA for, uh, for these couple of years. So that's a lot of different history, but I hope it answers some of your question. And um, what you mentioned, like several registries like Anthony Nolan, CIBMTR, and the WMDA. Um, may maybe uh, try, uh, try for everything, uh, for everybody out there, try to differentiate. So what, what is the specialty of the WMDA? What, what is it for? Okay, sure. That's a good question. So, you know, the um, many countries not all countries, but many countries have got an unrelated donor registry. Um, and that is the mechanism to um, recruit volunteer donors and to list volunteer donors so that um, if a transplant center needs a donor for their patient and they don't have somebody in the family, that they can go to usually their national registry um, and try and find a donor. So, you know, in, in the UK, that's uh, Anthony Nolan is the, the big registry, but there are other registries within the UK as well, in particular, um, the, um, the, the NHS, the National Health Services Registry. You know, in America, it's the National Marrow Donor Program, which is the big registry. Um, and all of these registries would be very effective in their own countries, but it would not be so effective if each transplant center had to go and search every individual registry to find a volunteer unrelated donor, because we know that about 50% of the um, donor products for transplant, either a bone marrow or peripheral blood, actually cross an international border before they are transplanted into the patient in an individual country. And so what the WMDA um, was initially started to do, along with a, its partner organization, the World Marrow Do uh, Bone Marrow Donors Worldwide, now the two are together, but initially they were a little separate. But one of the main goals was to create an international list of all of the volunteer unrelated donors on all the registries in all the countries, so that if I'm seeing a patient in my transplant center in Milwaukee, I only have to search one register to be able to see all of the available donors everywhere in the world. And so the um, first bone marrow donors worldwide and then the WMDA have 
worked hard to make that goal um, achievable. And so now it's called Search, Match and Connect, and it's a single file that all of the registries contribute to. Um, what WMDA is working on now is a mechanism to also connect all the registries so that you can actually request the donor product through that same system where that has always been done in a in a little bit of a different way. So we've made a lot of progress over many years to try and make the system as easy and streamlined as possible and to try and make sure the patient gets their transplant, you know, wherever the donor product is coming from as quickly as they can. So, you know, that is a very important function of the WMDA. The other function of the WMDA is a a professional society in much the same way that the EBMT is a professional society. So it's a lot of volunteers who come together to work in a lot of what we call pillars to ensure harmonization of practice, to ensure safety of patients and donors, and to ensure quality of the product. So, um, you know, the WMDA um, has members which is most of the large registries around the world. And it also has an accreditation system, which is like JC. Um, in other words, it's not, uh, it's not universally re required across the board. You know, with JC, some countries require all their transplant centers have JC, but the overall, it isn't um, that you can't do a transplant if you're not JC accredited. And it's the same with FACT, you know, it's partner in, in mostly in the United States, but the WMDA has an accreditation system for registries. And um, the importance of that is that all registries get to a minimum standard to ensure the quality of the product. And so even though, um, even though it's not a requirement, it's something that the whole community supports and works towards because as you know, when you're working with somebody who you know their quality is going to meet a, a minimum standard that so does your registry that gives you a lot of confidence and a lot of um, uh, uh, of reassurance that things will be um, as you expect them to be and that uh, is a process that has been going on for for many years and more and more registries and I don't know the exact exact figure at the no at the moment but more than more than three quarters of the donors listed in the BMDW come from registries that are accredited. So it's a very high number. The community is very, very invested in making sure that there's there's good quality. So I, I hope that gives a little bit of a sense of of the difference. You know, the the I guess each registry for unrelated donors sort of contributes to the WMDA, which kind of supports and harmonizes all the activities of the of the registries and donor centers around the world. I think that's a, that's, first of all, that's a, a great, uh, yeah, great installation, but I think also very tough work to harmonize everything yeah. uh, when, when you speak of the world. Um, one question, um, have you a number of, of areas in the world that, uh, that uh, are not covered by, by, by you or by, by any um, registry, bone marrow registry or anything? Yeah, it's there... a good question. Um, you know, WMDA is open to any registry that wants to join mm -hmm. as long as they have a, um, a minimum number of donors and they are providing donors internationally. Some registries, if they don't give a product to any international patients, it's not as important that, that those sort of standards are met and, and sometimes those registries don't join. But um, one of the biggest gaps is Africa because um, there, you know, there are a lot of problems with healthcare in general in Africa you know, in terms of delivering high quality health for basic um, infections, for caring of pregnant women and, and children. And so the ability to do transplantation is, is another step up. So there are countries, of course, in, in Africa that are quite advanced. For example, South Africa has got a very active transplantation practice and registries 
um, and there are other registries starting in other parts of Africa. But for large parts of the conf of the of the continent, transplants just simply don't occur in these countries, and um, and the registries don't exist. There's very strong registries in almost all other parts of the of the world, I would say. Oh, that's that's quite a thing. But yeah, Africa, that's um, I think that's a big big gap and big challenge for for every organization. I can can imagine um, when it comes to to like harmonization, cooperation. Um, but um, maybe your your way into where you are now is, is quite quite a formidable example of um, how because sometimes people in, in Germany I have the feeling that yeah you talk about donation but you all all the patients are quite quite uh, surprised when they really hear that yeah of course there is donation but Germany has a limit limited number of do, do, uh, donors so the the donation needs to come from somewhere else and then every everybody's really really excited when they hear like this uh, far far away names like I, I don't know brazil or, or yeah. uh, australia um but that that needs collaboration that needs organization and um, what what do you think are the most um the, the major challenges in in like refining these these uh, organizations how how can we do better what what is the big big obstacle right now of, of course COVID. But yeah. uh, aside, aside from that, maybe? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a good question. And I see the answer sort of in two different ways. One um, part is kind of logistic barriers. And the other part is, uh, I guess, scientific or collegial collaboration. And um, to me, those both of those things need to be uh, well done or considered to really make um, to make the whole system harmonized and to make sure that patients everywhere get uh, get the transplant that they need. I think that as a field, we've done very, very well with the um, with the collaboration. You know, you, you can't create a system like this and if unless everybody agrees and everybody buys into it, you know, and it's similar to the EBMT, where you've got so many people who contribute data so that you can produce outcomes, you can do studies, you know, and that is something that the transplant um, community has led in the world. You know, outcomes databases really started in, in transplant even before they were called that. And, you know, the CIBMTR and the EBMT um, coordinating the collection of data from every transplant center that they that they include and then being able to make that data available back to the community that's really an amazing thing and that ability is the same in in the wmda and the donor registries world the idea that we're all doing something to improve safety and quality and that we're working in it together i think that that's really really important and we all just need to keep working on that all the time. The second thing is, of course, the logistic barriers, because every single country has their own rules and regulations. I mean, I think if you just take, for example, the idea of customs or barriers at um, border control, you know, um, you mentioned to me, Nico, before we started that you worked as a courier. And so you're very familiar with this, but, you know, you can imagine the different rules that different countries have to accept a product into their country or to allow something to go out. And, you know, from something as simple as urgency of flights and getting somebody on the next flight to something like X-raying the products, which we've seen over and over again is an issue, to something like Brexit, where all of the free flow of products between England and the rest of the EU suddenly gets very impacted because the rules about what is free um, uh, free access across borders suddenly changes for somewhere. So I think that kind of border control is a really good example of the different rules and requirements that no matter how much we all want to do the right thing, we really have to um, lobby and 
you know, be a um, be a, a confined political um, lobbyist, I suppose, to try and make sure that the rules don't become so crazy or so exclusionist that we can't, you know, get things get products across borders in a way that that is easy and um, not too expensive. And how do you see um, the actual present right now for for all all these what you mentioned basically what what do you think is is the latest status um, did, did we do a step back um, are there do you see uh, more regulation now due to what, what you mentioned Brexit and, and and you know I think the the pandemic has really thrown everything on its head but mm -hmm. if there's one thing that's come out of the pandemic that's really been amazing is to see how organizations have really managed to continue doing what they do despite all the problems and you know i think that the um the donor registries are a fantastic example of that the, firstly the donors have been completely willing to to go ahead and do what they're asked for um and very willingly and in fact even more so than before in some cases <clears throat> And the registries have worked with their governments, have worked with their um, communities and lobbyists to really try and make sure this all happens. So I think that I think that we're in a in a very, very good place. I think that we really are um, working together as a solid community and solving problems as they come up. But you know, it's difficult when you know the EU is going through a process at the moment to revise some of their rules about around blood and tissue, um, uh, blood cells and tissues, and sometimes those rules end up not being the same as the ones in the US or Canada, or they don't change at the same time. And so one of the values of the World Maradona Association is to make sure that if the EU is is having a consultation period that actually they can also get voices from other parts of the world so that we can try and make sure that whatever rule or however the rules change, they're still consistent with the international exchange of products. And, and that's one of our missions in, in the WMBA. And I know we're going to have to finish quickly because the time is coming to the end, but I did just want to uh, make one other comment and firstly to congratulate you on your trainees committee because I think that's amazing i think that's a really really good um a good idea because we all know that we have workforce issues in the transplant world and that in many parts of the world people don't go into transplant once they graduate and and go on and as my, in my position as president of wmda one of the things i really want to do is bring forward young people in the WMDA as well to also try and do the same thing where we can expose people to what WMDA does, we can educate people. And I think this is a wonderful opportunity to to do that. At our most recent meeting, we invented a new thing called the Junior Lab, where we invited um, anybody who was new to the WMDA or who had only been in the WMDA for the last five years to come and tell us how we can do better about bringing new people in, creating mentorship, you know, building people's careers through the WMDA. And I think this would be a great partnership for us to include your group and get some of your ideas so that we can, um, so that we can extend that to as many people as possible. So thank you for the opportunity. Um, I am very thankful for the opportunity and uh, we are definitely happy to collaborate and get help and offer help in any way. And um, thank you very much for your time. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, I know you're busy and um, see you and speak to you very, very soon. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Nico. And, and yes, I hope to see you in person. Maybe yeah. it will be in uh, Prague, I guess. Let's um, hope, yeah, <laughs> at the next crossed. CBMT, yeah. Fingers yeah. crossed, and thank you very much. Bye-bye.